and it says we're live. Hello, hello. Regular time to be live again. <laughs> Thanks to those of you who showed up yesterday for the little impromptu live that I did. Oh, Julia, where are you going? Packing for a trip. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going home tonight into my warm house you get i'm like i'm bundled up it's cold in here my hands aren't working <laughs> hello hello i have some goodies to show you guys um i didn't get to film in the thrift stores i made a deal with my daughter that i would just spend time with daughters that i would spend time with them and not have a camera in my hand so i did shop uh, but I didn't film it. I filmed the swap meet. I got, I, that was our, that was our uh, compromise. But so I'm going to show you what I found at the thrift store. Um, actually, I got a couple of the, the swap meet stuff over here. The, the swap meet stuff snuck in over here too. Hmm. Should I show you the swap meet stuff? Who wants to see the swap meet stuff or just wait until the video comes out? <laughs> Gotta make sure you guys watch the video. No, I want to come back to the desert. Cold day in Maryland. Yes, it is winter. It's it's winter solstice, which means it is the shortest day of the year. And from here, that means we start lengthening the days again. More sunshine. Yay. And tonight, who's going to watch the... Um, I forget what it's called, but it's where Saturn and Venus are going to cross and it's going to be a spectacular star in the sky. Um, probably the same alignment of the stars that the wise men saw all those years ago. It's kind of cool to think about. Waiting in for wimps. You mean waiting is for wimps. <laughs> yes, Saturn and Jupiter. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are going to be on an airplane. So I'm kind of hoping we can see it, you know, from the sky. And if we can, we're going we're gonna to shoot some video. We're definitely going to shoot some video if we can see it from the plane. That's tonight. Yeah. That's tonight. Rachel's sitting next to me. Of course, you won't see her on camera because that's not what Rachel does. <laughs> but she's here to help me hand me stuff that I have on the table. Oh, if, let me just dive in. Let me just dive in. Um, at a Goodwill that we went to, first thing I got, oh, here's the game I want to play. Since I, I'm not at my regular computer, I am on a Mac Airbook, which is not my thing. And so sharing the screen and researching would be super difficult for me at this point. So what I thought we would do is I will tell you the search term to use and then you guys go look it up and tell me the value. How's that? That'd be fun, right? Because I want you guys to like learn how to value this stuff anyway. Um, so... I got this little baggie. If I, I already ripped it open so I could get into it easily. So there's three things in this baggie. And the baggie was a four, $4.99. Now we did get a 10% student discount because of Jordan. Um, so, but it was it was priced at $4.99. And inside that baggie, I mean, there was this, which is really nothing. Um, it's just, and it's even got a chip because they threw it in a bag with other stuff. So this We'll probably just go at a yard sale and be on its way. It doesn't really have the, ah, this is what I need. I need you to put stuff like over on the other side once I've shown it, because I don't have room to go. She's getting a blanket. <laughs> and then also in that baggie was a little fish. And you know, I like to pick up the little art glass fishies. And I sell these anywhere from $15 to $20 for this size. And there's no chips or cracks. So he's pretty cool, right, with the blue and the green. But that isn't really what I'm handing it over to her. That isn't really what I got the bag for. It was this little guy. This is a little Millie Fiore glass paperweight. And he's pretty nicely done. 
not a super expensive one, but um, a nice one nonetheless. And this is worth, uh, I would say this is probably 15 to 20 dollars right here. So um, that's that's the main thing that I got that little baggie of stuff for. So I got that and I got I got this little vase, which this reminds me of the Pennsylvania Dutch kind of motif. It was $2.99 and there's no mark on the bottom. And I simply bought this because I liked I liked the look of it, um, which is that's one of my things. Yes, I look for vintage. Less I look, yes, I look for antique. But even more important than that, I look for eye appeal. Eye appeal is what gets you the sale. The collectability antique vintage part is what can get you the higher value. Does that make sense? So you can sell things with good eye appeal all day long. If it looks good, people will pay money for it. But it will bring a higher dollar amount usually. And these are general rules of thumb. It'll bring a higher dollar amount if it's got a name, you know, that collectors want because collectors then attach like an investment value to it. But as just a nice decorative vase, again, this is about a $15 piece. So I might keep this one though, because I like it. Rachel's. Is it a partridge in a pear tree? I didn't. I didn't notice that that was a partridge in a pear tree. All right, then I've got a little single salt or pepper shaker. I do pick up single shakers. Um, they don't scare me away. I did pay three bucks for him, mainly because he's just cute. And I do like to give the little single shakers as some of my, my gifts and prizes when I do my live sales. And I just thought, he just has a really nice look to him um, and he would be good for even putting, I mean, you could put like a little air freshening kind of thing in him. His little, his, his little holes are big enough even there. You could put like one of those incense sticks coming out of his hat too, but he was just cute. So I picked him up and then I did get a pair, a pair of salt and pepper shakers. Oh, when he wasn't old, he's got, oh, your little, your little thing on the bottom here is cut later. <laughs> little Scotty dog, salt and pepper shakers. Like those will go in a live sale because I know you guys are dog crazy and cat crazy and horse crazy and all the crazies. Um, but I don't even remember what we paid for these guys. Do you remember what we paid for these guys? It was like three bucks. It was $2.99, right? She's shrugging her shoulders. I think it was like $2.99. Yeah. So there we go. So we got these little guys. Can you fix this little stopper on the bottom? This little stopper is caving in. And I did get another single shaker. A llama. Who doesn't love a llama? Now, this one was only 99 cents. So, and again, he'll probably be one of my prizes that one of the live sales. Oh, he says something. Oh, he just says China on the bottom. It's just a China, a China llama. All right. So got the, <clears throat> got that. I can't fix it. Oh, uh, we'll have to get another little stopper for him. That's why it was the way it was. It's a little, it's a little messed up. Right. It's like restore. Oh, oh, this girl. Okay, chalkware. So chalkware can be pretty collectible. And so can Marvel figures. And I thought the combination should be pretty good. This girl has some age on her and yet she's in really good condition. Yes, she has a little little ding on her cheek. And she's got a couple of the little normal, you know, chalkware dings on her hair. Uh, but for the most part, she is in really good condition. She is a bank. And I paid $4.99 for her. Now, I did try to look her up, and I could not find a chalkware Wonder Woman. So if anyone can come up with a value on my chalkware Wonder Woman, I would love it. 
What is chalkware? What is chalkware? It's one of those things like I know what it is. I'm not quite sure how to explain it. It's like a plaster. It's not, it's a ceramic, but it's kind of a crude ceramic. It's, um, yeah, how would you guys, how would you guys describe what chalkware is? It's a chalky plaster that gets painted and yeah. Oh, am I pixelated for all of you guys? Oh no. I hope that clears up. Yeah, a lot of times they gave them away at carnivals. And you guys are saying that the, the video quality is not good. Is it clearing up? Again, I am on a Wi-Fi connection here. I go home tonight. <laughs> I go home tonight. You have her touch it. Yeah, here, that's chalkware. She's making a face. Like, it was weird. So I don't know what she's worth. Um, so she's the type of item I would put at auction because I don't know a value right offhand. And it's also the type of, I mean, she's not worth hundreds of dollars or anything. So I'm pretty confident in putting her at auction and letting the market decide. Yeah. Oh, goodness. All right. We're having some video issues, it would seem. All right. Take Wonder Woman. She Wonder Woman. Snacks. All right, we're gonna see. I hope this clears up. I do not know why we're having problems. I think it's because my daughter is on probably a Zoom call for her work. And so the bandwidth is getting a little bit chewed up. Oh, Misty hates the feel of chalkware. Oh, I, 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 it feels very cheap to me. Like. When you're used to porcelain and fine pottery, chalkware feels very cheap. I, it's very possible that she was that she was made in Mexico. Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, I am in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Melissa says if you refresh, it gets better. Yeah. There's a Batman listed at four hundred and twenty-five dollars. Whoa. Whoa. Now we all know though, anybody can ask anything. It's, a, it's about those solds that counts. But yeah, I had a feeling she was worth something. And here's a good lesson too, you guys. Here's a really good lesson. When you're shopping those thrift stores and you know they're looking stuff up, if they can't find the item, they're just gonna price it. And they're gonna, a lot of times assume it's, it's not worth anything because they couldn't find a value. So those are the things that you can still find at thrift stores that sell really high. Like don't give up. Even when the thrift stores are raising their prices and looking stuff up, you can still make some good money because they just, they're not sellers. I mean, in the sense like we are, they're pricing just cause it's like their duty, you know, to look it up. Wonder Woman's powers are blocking my signal. Ah! <laughs> I will ask George. Or maybe I won't ask George because I'm going to be in a thrift battle with George soon. <laughs> that got rescheduled, by the way, for those who showed up for the thrift battle the last time, about a month ago, um, and we had to reschedule. Uh, we are now on the books for February 24th. I think is the date that Dominic gave me. February 24th, I'm gonna be battling with George the Antique Nomad in a thrift battle. Yeah, no, I'll ask George. Okay, next, you guys know how I love the quarry, qu qu quarry critters. Um, and these guys are the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil bears which I thought was fantastic because those already are good sellers. I did pay up for this guy. I paid $15. Is that what it is? What? I just, I just thought it was cute. Yes, he is. Speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. I just thought it was cute. Though. I'm trying to see what his official name is. They put that price tag right over his official name. Hold on. Stand by. 
Oh, it's not even going to be on here after all that. Ah, you want to peel that more and see if you can find it? So I did pay $15 for that because those larger quarry critters sell for $50 and up. Um, I think I saw a recent on this particular one, even it sold for 25. Now I don't let that get me down because that just means that's what that seller was willing to take. It doesn't absolutely mean that's the value. Now, if there had been 10 of them, that sold for 25, that would tell me that that's about the market value. But remember that when you're researching and okay. it's okay, and looking things up to price them, you're going by what somebody else had determined was a value. And this is kind of like this wave that happened. And then some another seller looks it up and sees, oh, they sold it for that. Another seller looks, oh, they sold it for that. That's why I say we have the power to affect the market value by simply raising our prices. And so other sellers then look and go, oh, well, here's one listed for this. I'm going to list mine for that. And pretty soon you have set a trend. So that's something that that we can affect and we can make happen for this stuff that we sell. Now, commodity type items where they can go on Amazon and look up and it's kind of like a set price, we don't have as much to say about that pricing. But antiques and collectibles, we absolutely do because this is not something where there are hundreds of them available. There's, you know, sometimes maybe a page full of the same thing. But even then, um, those are not the items I, I, I try not to pick up those items. I try to pick up the items where there's not very many. And sometimes you can't even find the thing you're looking for. As in the next item I'm going to show you. Wait, I got to show him this because this is. He's broken. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, and now they're all going, what's broken? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Okay, so here's one I'm going to have you guys look up. Um, I already did a little bit, so I know I know the results that you will be able to find. But I can't show you because well, cause I can't share a screen right now. Yeah, the, the bears sold last February for $15. That doesn't mean that's the value of those bears. It doesn't mean that. I'm going to list those bears for probably $60 or $70. And I may sit a little longer and wait. There you go. Another bear just sold for 53. That is exactly what I'm talking about. We can lift those prices up. Would I be happy with 50? I would be happy with 50. So that's why I said I will price them probably around 60. It's a teaser to keep you glued to YouTube. Oh, come on. You would stay anyways. Right. Okay. So next, I spot this, and I spot the glaze, and I'm like, ooh, I like the glaze. No, but what was even better, sitting off to the side was a matching duck. Look at that. The duck belongs in the little bowl, right? Okay, cool. Now, this is what I want you to go look up. I want you to look up artistic potteries. Don't put anything else. Put in artistic potteries. Here's what the bottom looks like. You can see I paid $12.99 for the set. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it's not too fuzzy. This is uh, mid-century California pottery. So let me know what you come up with. Because you, you should be able to find and look in the solds. Sort by highest first and go to solds. And look at the price that just one of these sold for without the duck. I haven't even looked for the duck. Are you sure that's a duck? I am sure that's a duck. Can you see the duck? In a moment. Only if you're going to come be on camera. I'm Can waiting to see. Up? Is somebody looking this up? You see that, Mom? I was on camera. You were on camera. Yes, face. Face counts. Only the face counts on camera. I'm waiting to see. Is anybody looking it up? Did you find it? I know the glaze is fantastic. 
fantastic. Wish I had better lighting in here too. All right. I know the result that's out there that you should be able to pull up on this exact bowl. They're all looking right now. Looking, looking, looking. Anybody find it yet? Well, I'm just gonna take a sip of my little lightly caffeinated beverage while you guys are looking. No, you can go get your own. They're working on it, working on it. We're gonna start working on this research thing again, like next week we'll do when I can share a screen again. Because that's the piece I want you guys to get really quick at and really proficient at, because that's going to make you money. I see far too often where you guys say, I spent hours looking for this. I don't want anybody to have to do that to set your pricing. Nope, higher than that, Emily. Artistic, put in Artistic Potteries Co. Artistic Potteries Co and sort by highest. I wish I knew how to share the screen. Yep, I just did. Artistic Potteries Co. Don't put in, don't put in any other words than Artistic Potteries Co. Don't put in bowl, don't put in anything. Just put Artistic Potteries Co. Sometimes you limit your results because you're putting too many words in and eBay is trying to give you a fine-tuned result and won't show you as many results. So. What you should see is a $75 result on just this piece, just this piece. And then I've got the little duck that goes inside. Little ducky goes inside. So this should be about a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks. Oh, go carefully over there. Okay. Well, I put all of this jewelry. Those were from the swap meet though. I'm trying to do the, the thrift store stuff first. What else did I get at the thrift store? Has it got a price tag on it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, it was an active, not sold. Okay. I got gotcha. you. 75 oh, wait. bucks. Should we do this first? Because I already mentioned it. This, is it. Did I buy that at the thrift store? Yes. Oh, I did? Okay. Pretty sure. All right. The broken thing. It would have a price tag. No, this came from the swap meet. Okay, the piece she said is broken. Oh, his trunk is broken, huh? Oh, that's a bummer. It was this little elephant guy. But I mean, my gosh, look how cute he is. And he signed, oh gosh. Am I gonna be able to see that? Probably not. Can you read what that says? Because I sure can't in this light. Isn't that crazy that the eBay results Two. are so inconsistent between different people. Two thousand two. A E X. A M. She can't read it either. It's cursive. <laughs> I don't read cursive. Oh, it's in cursive. Yeah, okay. We'll have to figure him out later. Yeah, when we get, yeah we'll have a magnifying glass. And go. Okay, this is me. Oh, this is signed on the back. Let me see. This is a flamingo spoon rest that I paid $2.99 for, and he is by... I can't read that either. Okay. My eyes are so bad, you guys. And they're tired. <laughs> something eco design. Something eco design. It's that first something that we need to know. 
the first something that we need to know. What else? Oh, the that tea set I got at the swap meet. I mean, at the thrift store. Mm -hmm. okay. That. I need to show that next. And while I know I don't have a loop, I don't have anything here. I am disadvantaged. Disadvantaged. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'll start showing you some of the jewelry that I got at the swap meet. Look at this rosary. Look at, it's got little birds. It's, yes, it was $1. Now they had it marked as sterling. I don't think it's sterling. I mean, I guess it's possible. Eh, it doesn't feel like sterling to me. So I got a rosary. I showed you guys I was out of rosaries, but now I got rosaries again. And I got tons of pins, tons of pins, like a little dolphin and this really cool. Um, this is a JJ Designs, a little, she looks like a oh, very stylish fashion lady. And I got, and some of these, I haven't gone through to see if anything's sterling yet. I just was grabbing because the price is right. This has all these little stones in it, which is really cool. It's a pendant. And I got, oh, he's signed on the back. Oh, uh, he was one of those, the, the, you knew the brand that they Monet? I think so. Is he a Monet? A Monet gingerbread man? Is that possible? Look how cute he is. Because you knew the brand when you picked it up. Yeah, I can't read it now, though. It's way too dark in here. This, <clears throat> this I butterfly this pin seems very old to me. I don't know why. It just looks like it has some age on it. When I show you the back. Let's see that. Stars. But just the the back, everything looks, yeah. you know, not not like antique old, but yeah. just this has some age on it, and it's enameled with little rhinestones. Are you still trying to make that out? I got it off, but I have no idea what it says. Okay, got of course a little kitty cat, red eyes. Now, as something about this kitty cat, and where they strategically placed those rhinestones, I'm just saying, okay. Somebody had some fun with that. Let me see. I have no idea what that says. Sarsa. I Sars. Saparilli? <laughs> I don't know. Eco Designs. Ah, that's what he was. How much was he? He was two ninety nine, right? It was two ninety nine for the flamingo spoon rest. I don't know. But that's. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out when we get some more light. My goodness. Oh, these earrings. These earrings are cool. They are little Egyptian people. Oops. I'll show you one because then I can keep one still. Little Egyptian walking people. Little dangly earrings. I got another one of the roses. Rachel found this one. We sold one of these recently. This one comes in its original box even, which is cool. I forget what the name is. It's um, AMG or it's, it's, it's signed on the back. I'll have to, no, we don't need to look right now. We'll do it during when we do it on the sale. These will be in the next live sale that I do jewelry. This is a sweet little vintage pin. Check. <laughs> it just came open. Ah, I'm going to stab myself. No blood on the computer. Okay, so there. There's that pin right there. Very sweet little pin. A little skunk. Oops. Skunk? A little skunk. A little skunk. Oh. Yeah, got a little skunk. And a little penguin, a little, little tiny penguin. Aren't these great? And I know you guys like the cameos. So I found another cameo. Always looking for the cameos. And a, and a, this is a pendant. 
this looks like it's signed. This is signed something, but I can't read what it is, of course. But it's a little gold starfish. Yeah, it was from the Kobe swap meet in San Diego, and it was really crowded. We weren't even thinking about it being the the last weekend before Christmas. Hello, we should have known. This is a nice old vintage. Look at the fine filigree work and the setting on that. Got that. There were just tables and tables of jewelry. So we were just grabbing up anything that was interesting. What is camphor, camphor glass? What is that, Susan? I'm not familiar with camphor glass. Got a shield, swords. We got some. There's a pair here. I know there's a pair, but it's really hard for me to show a pair. So I'm just going to show one. We have a pair of black cat earrings. Oh, this one's another really pretty, really pretty enamel pin. You guys sick of jewelry yet? I can move on to something else. Um, I saw, I mean, I was looking for the answer to the glass question I asked, and it's scrolling too fast. Check out this sweet little pin with the a little heart dangle. I don't know if it's supposed to dangle that way or that way or that way or there we go. Probably just like that. That one's really sweet. And I, this I thought was super interesting. I don't believe I've ever seen like a, I want to say that this is like milk thistle. Um, I know about milk thistle from giving it to the animals to help with liver issues. Um, and that's what it looks like to me is a milk thistle. And I've never seen a pin that's a milk thistle. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, I'm only going to do the jewelry on my live sales um, because there's too much about the jewelry that I don't know the terminology. I can't fill out all the item specifics, whereas I can talk to you guys and answer questions, you know, and show it to you and, you know, whatever you need to see. But I, I just, to do it on eBay, I just can't. I don't have the patience. These are little cloisonne earrings. Check those out. Cloisonne earrings. And then I got some little, um, I want to say these are freshwater pearl. Little dangle earrings. Like, I like these. I'd wear these if I could. My ears don't like anything in them anymore is that all of it okay yeah i know and then another teeny tiny little butterfly and then this was what started it all i saw this one and i that's what made me start looking on the table because that's a jelly belly so that's another search go look up jelly belly pin there you go. Jelly belly. jelly belly. These are called jelly bellies, and they're very, very collectible. They don't know. <laughs> Stop like reaching. I like there she is back. She wants to look at him a little closer. And that's, I don't know what kind of stone that is. Innocent. I'm trying to feel if it's cold, if it's a real, everything's cold in this house, though. That's not a good gauge. <laughs> so, it's all cold. So yeah, and on top of that, I'm not I'm not gonna pull all this out. I'm just gonna show you. This is all jewelry, also. This is all jewelry. And you will see what's in that bag as you watch the videos this week. There will be, I think it's gonna be in three videos because there's a lot of footage of the swap meet because it was super fun. And we had some really good um teachable moments so tried to go into a lot of details on stuff for you yeah some jelly bellies can be worth thousands exactly yes it will be live in one of my friday sales i think we decided we are going to have a sale on january 1st which is uh, a week from friday that'll be 
that'll be the next sale of the year. Let me just double check my, is that right? Did I get the calendar right on that? I think so. Um, calendar, calendar. I just got told that I have to be somewhere at 7 a.m. on Tuesday and I'm not super happy about that. It's too early. Uh, December 20th, 30th. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be Friday, January 1st will be our next live sale, our first live sale of the new year. And we'll be doing jewelry. I'll be doing all this jewelry. I don't know what rings I got. I did dig up some more rings from, from my stuff. So we will have some more, some more rings. And then, oh yeah, this was, I forgot that this was a um, thrift store. This was from the thrift store. Here's one I need, here's one I need looked up. This elephant, who I paid $7.99 for. Oh, I got it off nicely, there you go. Mm. She's getting a little sass over here, uh, you know, sitting next to me. So check this guy out. Is he not stunning? Stunning. He is Barcino. I have not looked him up yet. So you guys can look him up for me. Just remember when you look it up, put in Barcino elephant. That's it. Search by highest first. Okay. We don't care what the low one sold for. We want to see what the high one sold for. He's made in Barcelona, Spain. He's absolutely stunning. I paid $7.99 for him. And I would love to know what he's worth. Um, I would call him a mosaic. <gasps> no, he's broken. No. How did that happen? Ah. Okay, he's going to have to have a little repair. That's really weird because that's not even. It looks like. He's got the boo-boo. We're going to try to repair him, though. About $40. About $40, yeah. I And again, I bought him not because I sat there and looked it up at the store, but just on the wow factor and the fact that he is a name made in Barcelona, Spain. So Susan says about $40. Susan, are you the only one looking stuff up? <laughs> yep, the sales are at 1 p.m. Pacific or 4 p.m. Eastern. Yep. Oh, my goodness. She found one $264.19 sold November 23rd in Canada. Check that out. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. And now... I don't know how much, you know, that little, that trunk issue, or trunk, that tusk yes. issue is going to affect the value, but that, that does devalue it a little bit, a little bit. I don't know. Maybe somebody wants him to show up in a mystery box. They could let me know that. Um, oh, and now, now his little nameplate just came out too. So that's easy though. That's just a little touch of glue on there. Holy moly. Elephants falling apart in front of our eyes. Stay, elephant. Yep. All right. 60 in the U.S. See, now some of yours, I swear, stuff got chipped on the way home because this wasn't chipped when I bought it either. Darn it. So you're seeing 60. Uh, you're seeing 15 to 20. So this is where we really need to fine tune that researching because I want you guys seeing those $60 results and not pricing your stuff in the $20 range when you could be pricing it in the $60 range. Yeah. <laughs> Adventures of Kiss says, I'm still looking at Jelly Belly jewelry. <laughs> Average 40, saw one close to 60. They took best offer. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So. You've heard me talk about this brand a few times, like over the last month. This is Orchard Wear. As you can see, I hope that's, come on. See if it'll, 
focus. There we go. Orchard wear made in California. This happens to be the cherries pattern. And I just thought this dish was super unusual too. Sadly, we've managed to get a chip in it. This is what happens when stuff gets piled and actually this came from the store that the guy was just piling stuff into the bag, huh? Yeah. Yeah. See what I was already having like a heart attack. I go like, I'll take that. I'll take that. And I wasn't fast enough to grab this apparently because he was just putting breakables in the bag. Um, but still it's a tiny chip. I still think the value on this is about 30 bucks because it's a pretty collectible. Now, the cherries is not the highest valued of their patterns. Uh, so I wouldn't pay a whole much for cherries. I paid five bucks for this. Um, but orchard wear is one that is definitely worth picking up. Crown Trafari is the original belt jelly belly jewelry. It absolutely is. Yep. 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 Tiger Purple says, I've tried pricing a little higher, but that backfired. Of course, I haven't sold much anyway. Next year, I will open. It only backfires if you don't have a strategy for sending offers and accepting offers. So I do price on the very top high end. And maybe about 10% of my items sell for full price. But what that does is gives me a lot of leeway for making offers and for accepting offers. So always keep in mind how much you paid for the item and what your margin is that you need to make from it. And then you can make aggressive offers. And, and, it's, and it's really a psychology thing in selling stuff. People want a bargain. People want to negotiate. Very few people just want to buy something priced at what it is unless it's a commodity item where you go to Amazon, that's the price, that's what you pay. But even then, Amazon no longer has just one page for one item. You still get to shop around a little bit even on Amazon these days. Um, but really, you're, you're working with human psychology in selling and that little, that, that impulse buy factor where a lot of times people are like, I really, really don't need this, but I really want it. And so you can help them justify purchasing it by giving them a really good deal. That's, that's how it works. Only one with cherry pattern and it sold for $8, but had $23 and 15 cents shipping. Yeah. See, and that's another thing, you know, um, the shipping really affects things too. And so that's why putting in the, the weight and the dimensions as close as you can get to them is important and doing that calculated because somebody closer is going to see a very much lower shipping amount. You know, I wouldn't sell that for $8 on eBay. I wouldn't do it. I would take it over to the booth and sell it for fifteen twenty before I took $8 on eBay. I would sell it locally for those that don't have a booth. I would sell it on Marketplace, someplace else, you know, where somebody will buy it because of the, the, um, the visual properties of it. But I, and that's the thing. I hope I can teach all of you, don't lower your prices to a point where it lowers the market on things. Like it is almost better to just sell it at a yard sale you know, for $5 rather than take $8 on eBay. You know what I mean? It's not worth your time to go through all the work for an $8 item. That's going to take a lot of packing and shipping. Yeah. All right. Um, and of course, ah, I had to get the D. It's a box. How cool is that? Come on. It actually, it actually sold for uh, 30 bucks back when it was new. And I got it for $3.99. And this was probably going to go on a shelf behind me because it's a D. You know, D for Danny. Oh, yeah, we got some birds. We got some birds. These we're keeping. These will go on our bird wall. You've heard me talk about my bird wall before. We have a, a bird wall, and I love these. And they were $3.99 each. So 
We're keeping the birdies. <laughs> that was it from the fifth star. Oh no, the teapot, the tea set. Oh. Birds, yep, yeah, birds. <laughs> No, they're not lenticular. They're just they're photographs put on canvas. So they're they're canvas, but they're they're just photographs of birds. Yeah. They're very cute. This this teapot I thought was absolutely stunning, which is what made me grab it off the shelf. And then seeing that it had a name made it even more exciting. So I'll show you all three pieces one at a time. So this is made oh i can't see the bottom of this one i'll show you this one I, you can see the mark on the other pieces so i won't peel this one off i paid ten dollars for the three-piece set here is the creamer it's got the creamer has a blue interior which i thought was really cool but it is shofu shofu made in japan so look up shofu tea set shofu tea set um how many empty suitcases did we take we, we brought two empties and then the two that we have clothing in that still have room in them and then we have two carry-ons so we're good we're good to get stuff home julen meckler figurine bought for 2.99 sold for 495 what what is that what is a julen Meshier. What is that? <laughs> so, Anne, are you guys looking up Shofu? Shofu tea set. Oh, you sold that. That's awesome if you sold that. You can gather up all this story. That I brought an entire carry on full of bubble wrap this time. Brought my own bubble wrap, um, and it's funny because I had, I have this, um, this. It's called a gimbal, you know, to hold my phone, and it's got a big fuzzy microphone on it. And I had that in there. That's what they stopped and had to open up and look inside. They're like, "Oh, you got something weird in there." And then they open it up. It's all this bubble wrap and this one weird thing. They look at me like I'm crazy. Three piece set, eighty one dollars. Okay. Yep. Shofu is a good name. Now, 90 to 145. Okay. So you're looking at different patterns, right? So I don't zero in on just this pattern when I am looking up the value of a brand. Because again, you are relying on that seller to have accurately valued it in the first place. And if this brand is selling for much higher in other patterns, I'm gonna go with that because it's more about the brand. And if the pattern is beautiful, you can price up in the higher range, even though you may see other results that are much lower. A lot of times in something like this, your confidence in pricing it higher is what causes the buyer to want to buy from you versus the one that they think is like it's priced too cheap what's wrong with it okay so there is a psychology in that Are these so you've been selling like crazy uh, you're trying to get a hundred items listed but you keep selling and can't keep up with them. yeah you can put those up here i'm gonna show those yes. just gonna put one. okay that's fine that is a good problem to have uh hawaiian porcelain figurines um, that was a response to something else that I missed. <laughs> okay, so so that's that. So I've got the three piece of show food now. And normally this is not something that I would pick up to travel with. This is going to be one of those tough things to get home. But um, it was definitely worth the hassle factor. Because I paid 10 and we should be able to get about 80 for it. Uh, these, I, I did not buy these for me, but I wanted to show you and let you know something. So my daughter, Jordan, is 28. She's a millennial. She picked out a set of four of these to be her dishes. Uh, they are Mikasa Lorraine. 
So it's not a super old pattern, but the fact of the matter is these young people want to start using this stuff. They want pretty, they want fine china, they want delicate. Uh, she got she drinks out of teacups every day. So keep that in mind, you're not necessarily selling to a collector. You could be selling to somebody who wants to just make this their everyday dishes. So that's what you did. It's really, it's a beautiful pattern. She got four, four of these and they, he gave them to her for three bucks. Because there originally was eight, where it is, eight. And, but there was only four left. Somebody only took four. Um, so they sold these ones for $3. Okay, some stuff that we got at the swap meet. Where's your horse? Where's your horse? Big the yes. So Rachel, Rachel found this. Um, and this is a Chinese. Uh, it's a famous horse sculpture and of course this is a reproduction but it is a solid metal reproduction it's i don't know what the metal is it's i think it's like a i, I thought it was brass i don't think it's brass um, i looked it up and brass is what i saw the other one was and did they put that patina on it the brass i'm not so sure this is brass it's heavy like brass um and it's got this patina on it but she found one, Rachel looked it up and found one that sold for like a hundred bucks of this. Yeah. If you get the real like version of this, it's going to be tens of thousands. I couldn't find one that was sold. I only found one that was Oh, you found listed? Okay. So she couldn't find a sold one. But this is, it is a Chinese, I'm trying to hold it so you can see how his legs are all positioned here. Like he's a running Chinese horse from Ming Dynasty. Yes. There was a stand yes. at one point. Yeah. He probably had a stand at one point somehow but so so she got the shopping now the fun thing was that i didn't ask the guy how much it was i i made her ask the guy because we all know she's going to get a better price than i am <laughs> so he sold the horse to her for 20 bucks 20 bucks for her little chinese horse there but then what else did we find oh that was the only thing we bought from him but it was his neighbor that we bought stuff from okay so the lady next door to him, I found this little guy, which I am pretty sure is Royal Bay Ruth. It has all of the qualities of Royal Bay Ruth, but it is not signed. Um, it's dainty as can be. It's got the lobster. It's got the age. Um, she sold this to me for three, three dollars, three dollars. For this guy. So even if it's not Royal Bay Ruth, I cannot go wrong buying that for $3, right? So I'll have to investigate if Royal Bay Ruth had unmarked items. The Tang horses tend to be standing versus running. That's why I didn't call it a Tang horse. Yeah. Um, and then on that table, of course, once the lady knew that she liked horses because she had her little horse, she was pointing out every horse thing that she had. So she ended up selling us this. Um, now, did you guys know this was a real thing? Like, yes. like these horses actually did this. There are postcards of actual pictures of the horses diving off the steel pier at Atlantic City, New Jersey. I did not know that because it seems a little cruel to me, but it is a thing. So this plate is by Langcraft, Japan. It's a souvenir plate. I could not find any comps on this guy, but I thought because of the horse thing, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. It's now a mall. I'm so glad they're not doing this anymore. Okay. I'm just saying. Um, kind of breaks my heart. Just shows you how faithful and loyal horses are. Oh yeah, she sold this that for three dollars. Oh, 
or two dollars for the plate. Yeah, it was it was very cheap. Um, and then I picked up these three. These are called a horse brass. Now these would have gone on the bridle of like the draft horses pulling the carriages. They were decorative. Um, they can be quite collectible. I don't know enough to know the repros from the real thing. These appear to have some age on them. Um, this one says, yeah, something canal. I think it says 1936. Leads to Liverpool something. I mean, this one, this one might actually, might actually be old. And this one is a deer, and this one doesn't have any writing on it. And then this one is interesting. Who knows? I, I know this is a symbol of something, and I can't remember what. What the little crescent moons together symbolized. Anybody, anybody know what that was to did, represent? Did one go on each side or is it? Yeah, they would put them, side? they would just put them on one side of them. They probably just put them to the outside, you know, where people could see. But yeah, I, I this the symbols look familiar to me, but I don't know what they go. Shriners? Oh. Shriners, I think that's what I'm thinking of. They look like Shriner symbols, don't they? Yeah. So I got all three of these for $5. All three for $5. I don't know what they go for. Again, you guys look up horse brass. Now, that's probably going to give you um, more than just something like this. It's going to give you sculptures and figurines and all kinds of stuff. So, if it's too many results, kind of like see what else words, another main keyword they put, and then you can add that word and narrow it down. And of course, Rachel is now on a briar horse kick. I know I'm kind of responsible for that. <laughs> Got her started on briar That's horses. The two to five dollars. This one's the ten to twelve dollars. So she has been looking up the briar horses that she's finding, and now she knows this one's worth two to five dollars, and this one's worth how much? Ten to twelve dollars. But the exciting one that we found was this guy. Now, oh, medallion. Yeah, you could look up. Bridal buckles. Okay, you guys are coming up with some other, other names. That's awesome. So this one, um, she didn't think was a briar at first, although the saddle says briar, so she knew, you know, the saddle was briar. Um, but when she brought it over to me, I got excited because, I don't know if you guys know, the glossy briar horses, some of them can go for big bucks. We have looked this one up. I forget what his name is now. We yeah. looked up his name. We had his name. Anyway, if you look up Briar Dappled Stallion, his he comes up and then you can narrow it down by his name. He sells for about a hundred bucks without the saddle. Now saddle is probably another 20 bucks, um, but she is not selling. She is keeping and collecting her new passion for collecting Briar horses. It'll get her into the thrift shops with me because now she has something to look for herself and yard sales and all that good stuff. So. And I checked, it's definitely a briar. Yep, and she knows now how to find the marks. They're usually, let me show them. It's right there. The marks on briars are usually on the back, on the inside of the leg, or it's sometimes on the back of their little booty there. It was but, on the chest of one once. And you saw one on the chest of one once? Yeah, but this one is on the, little. it's a little circle. And there is a site called identifymybriar.com, which is really good for looking up your briar horses. What is that price for, Melissa? What is that price for? $376.94. What is that price for? Triple Crescent Moon is a symbol of the goddess in the Wiccan religion. Boy, <laughs> okay. That's good to know. We'll get that we'll get that one out of the house quickly. <coughs> we'll get that one out of the house quickly. We don't want that one around. 
Thank you, Sherry. Merry Christmas to you. Cuter crescent moon necklace goddess. Yeah, okay, we'll just get that one sold quickly. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, the bottle. Ooh, creepy gotta take bottle. a drink. I got a frog in my throat. The creepy, creepy bottle. Creepy. Rachel calls this the creepy bottle. I don't know. What do you it's guys think? Creepy. I think it's cool. It is a poodle. Things can be cool and creepy at the same time. They can be. On the mark, on the bottom, it's just marked D E S Pat. You know, short, P A T, short for patent. 89968. So I knew it had some age on it. It is a cobalt blue poodle. And I, I got this. What else did I get with this? I got two things for $5. And now I can't remember what it was. What did I get with this? I'm looking around me. There was something else I got with this. And I don't remember what it was. I'll have to go watch my video so I know what it was that I got. I don't know. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. Oh, maybe it was this. Okay. I think it was, oh, it was this. Okay. It was this plate, which says Prussia B on the back, which I haven't looked it up yet. I'll look this stuff all up when I get home. Um, but I thought that was interesting enough and that it was beautiful. It's not a saucer. It's an actual plate. And then, you know, five bucks can't go wrong. I looked him up and he sells for about 15 to 20 on the poodle. He had shampoo in him. Really? $33 listed. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Send it to you now. We could be in a live sale, so we could make that happen. We will show that. Then I found this, just a sweet little shaker box, little miniature shaker box. Look at the detail on this. I found him with this. No, I didn't. Did you? No. Um, open it up. And he was, it's funny, she had him marked at $3, and then she's like, two, two. I love it. Oh, I didn't even notice it was signed on the bottom. It's signed Gary 2005. I don't know if that's the artist or somebody used this to give Gary a gift. Um, but it's very well constructed and she sold it to me for $2. I love when they do that. I'll pick something up. I'll look at it. I'll touch it. I'll put it back down and they start dropping the price. Sometimes I'll let them. Sometimes I'll just pay the original price because I, I, I feel... A little guilty when they do that <laughs> and of course okay i bought this for me because i paid a little bit too much for it it's a cloisonne tortoise since i bought it it's a tortoise um i paid 10 bucks i paid 10 bucks for him i silly i shouldn't have but he's super cute and he's easy to get home so got him then I don't know anything about these. This is a guy that I bought from the last time I was here and he's got cool old stuff, but look at these. It's a whole bunch of cloth turtles on a string with beads and the beads are, are old. Like, these are old beads. So I don't know what the significance of this string of turtles was. Does anybody know what a string of turtles significance would be? All I know, the significance for me is that it's turtles <laughs> and they're colorful and cool. So, yeah, it's a beaded string of, and it's got a bell on the end. So I, I don't know. It would have just hung up and I don't know what its purpose was for, but I like it. You know, I'm going to keep him for a while because I just think it's really cool. These are all handmade. The little eyes are like little, it's a sequin and a seed bead. Yeah, some of them are a little rough, but. Well, they're old. Well, they're old, yes. I'll be keeping them for a while. It's something unusual. And then last but not least, 
Rachel made the the find of the of the swap meet. Oh, I didn't even know that. Look at it's got a price on the back. He lied to us. <laughs> it's a of course that could be what he paid like 20 years ago. Um, we were admiring this guy's art that he'd actually painted, and then he goes, "Oh, I painted it all on this." And he had this little traveling easel thing here. You can see he did knock five bucks off the price, and there are some brushes inside. Um, but this is this is for Rachel to do her art. It is one of those little, you know, stand up folding. I think they are quite expensive if you go to buy these at like Aaron Brothers. It's an Aaron Brothers. So it was forty dollars once upon a time. And extra so he got his money completely back, and he probably used it for years. How cool is that? And for the cat to jump on. No cats at my house. No cats at my house. We have birds. We can't have cats. We have dozer right now. You found some turtle brooches at Lynn's World Consignment in Las Vegas. Incredible store. Yeah, it's so funny story about Lynn's World is they used to be on Caicos Boulevard for years and years. I think for 20 years they were in that building. And when they moved out, that's the building that I opened my store in. So I'm very familiar with Lynn's World. I've been in there a few times, uh, but their prices have gotten a little on the high side, I'm just saying. So I don't spend a lot of time. I, I tend to go where I know I'm going to get good pricing on stuff. Yep. Yep. Okay. I've got one more thing to share with you guys. Um, Jordan has some rings that she wants to sell. And Mama's going to list them for her. Or she's going to, I don't know if she's going to put them on posh or not. We don't know. But. Uh, we wanted to offer them here to you guys first. These are not something that I can auction um, because they are for her and she has to get a certain amount for them. But I thought that I would show them to you and if anybody was interested, you could get in touch with me. This first one is a size five and a half. And this is a Swarovski Crystal. Is it all Swarovski crystals, Jordan? No, she's ignoring me. So it's a beautiful size five and a half ring, and she would like $50 for this ring. And that's probably about half of what we could list it on eBay for. So if you wanted to go, like, kind of look that up. So, but this would be a set, like $50 is what we'd have to get for it. So if anyone is interested in the Swarovski crystal ring size five and a half, I do not believe it is sterling, although it very well could be. I didn't look real close. Oh, you know what? It is smart. I think it might be. There's a mark. There's a mark. If you're interested, yeah, it's... Uh, no, it's got a 52. I see a 52. And then another little mark. I don't know. I'll have to investigate more if it's sterling. Um, but if anybody's interested, just send an email to the niche lady at gmail.com and we can discuss it. The other one is a ring that was a custom made. It is a it is a white sapphire but real diamonds on the side and it is 14 karat gold and it is a size six size six as you can see there and then we put this on the black background hopefully the picture is not pixelated anymore there you go it's a beautiful ring now Obviously, this one, um, she paid $2,000 for this ring. And she's well aware she's not going to get that much out of it. So if anybody is interested, you want to send us an offer over at the niche lady at gmail.com. She's open to reasonable offers on that. So just told her I would put that out there. So I know I got some jewelry people here. So. That's it. That's it. And, and as soon as I finish with this, I am packing my suitcases and I head home tonight. 
and I get ready to uh, start working on some pretty awesome stuff for you guys. It's like, I cannot believe there's only a week and a half left of this year. Is that true? Yes. Wait, 10 days. Yeah, week and a half. So I got, I got work to do. Get some stuff launched that I want to launch by the first. <laughs> Holy moly, this, this year is just... <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Yep, just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. For sure, Liz, she's doing quite well on, on Poshmark now. Um, for those who watched yesterday, we were out at her modeling shoot. So she goes and she thrifts. Everything that she's wearing in her model shoots is thrifted. Uh, and that's a lot of what we do together. And so then she's got the professional photographs of her modeling it. And now she's putting that in her Poshmark store. And I will add a link to her Poshmark in my description as soon as I get to a computer I can really like type on. Um, you wanted to go check out, you know, some of the pictures and stuff. I do not have a brick and mortar store anymore. Nope. I want one. I want one. I love brick and mortar retail. I love it. But uh, yeah, nope. I closed a few years ago. Oh, you're going into lockdown on December 26th until January 23rd. Ugh, that's a bummer. I'm pretty sure we're headed that way too in Vegas. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are. Although it's really supposed to be quite locked down here in San Diego. It's not. It's not. People are still doing their thing. Places are open. She's working on being picked up by an agency currently. So right now she just gets hired on by the photographers um, and then hoping that they're putting it out. It's, it's a whole world, that whole photography modeling kind of thing. And, and she's trying, she's been on some covers of some fashion magazines, um, but she's trying to land a real solid gig. Very good. Very good. All right. We are not going to start talking politics. So with that, we've been on here over an hour. With that, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that awesome stuff. I will not be going live on Friday. Just watch for videos. I'll have stuff up there for you to watch. And uh, go be profitable and make it fun. And give yourself some time to enjoy and Reward yourself for all the hard work you've done this year because I know you guys have all worked hard. It's okay. Take some days off. It's good for you. All right. See you on the next one. <laughs> Bye, everyone.